This is the Risk Grand Novice series, where I, a Grandmaster on the Free For All ladder, share a lower ranked game. From this, hopefully more people will see the game of Risk, newer players can improve their play, and maybe we'll get to see something crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. So, one thing to take from this, probably the number one thing to take from this, is you don't have to be number one to have fun. So get out there, play Risk, and just have fun. You don't have to play the way people say is the best way to play if you don't enjoy playing that way. So get out there, start up a game of Risk, and uh, see what you can do. So, the map we're playing right now, I think the things to most note about the settings, aside from the map, is that it is going to be neutral in activity behavior. So if you leave, your the, the bot that takes over for you is going to do nothing but stack on itself. And then 10 minutes after that, it's going to auto-surrender auto uh, for you. And this is progressive card bonuses. I'm not sure if that will play a huge part in this. I'm, we'll see if it lasts that long to play a huge part, but we might. I think we'll see uh, trades get into the 20s and 30s, but I'm not sure much longer than that. And so also on this map, talking about it, I think at the higher levels, at least a big part of this map is getting along with your friends and, you know, your neighbor and each securing a bonus and then working on other players. You'll see that the bonuses are all relatively even in amount of bonus troops and often you can secure uh, a second bonus with your good neighbor and work on taking other individuals out. So first thing for us is we're going to remove ourselves the best we can from this game so we don't have an impact on it considering this is a lower ranked game. We do not want to take anyone out of it. We want to see how they play, how lower ranked individuals approach the game. Okay. And in case you're new here or you forgot, didn't pay attention in the past and uh, you're not new here, the reason why we watch newer players in the Risk Grand Novice series the reason why we watch the lower ranked players and how they play is to give newer players a chance to see how other newer players play um, and also have comments on it by someone who is who's a higher ranked individual. I am once again a grandmaster, uh, but there's there's a number of us out there, so I'm not sure how big of a deal it is, although it is very humbling when you see people say I've been working on getting grandmaster for a really long time. Um, to to and then for myself to have an accomplishment uh that other players other individuals work hard for that that makes you feel really good that makes me feel really good and, and it is quite humbling um but let's actually look at the game let's look at the game right now so <laughs> right now it looks like blue is going for the top left bonus red is going for the bottom left bonus and white is going for this this central right bonus right here, the, the Revan, I might try and pronounce it. So, and uh, purple and black might be contesting each other for this bottom right bonus right here, which is, I might like to see black move up to the top right bonus. They've got a decent number of troops there, and we might be able to see blue and, uh, not blue, we might be able to see purple and black if they could somehow switch out their troops that are within each other's area. Um, which takes a lot of coordination, might be hard to do. Um, that would be a very good thing. Looks like the black player is just going to be using up some of their troops in the purple player's bonus right here and placing their initial troops in that top right uh, bonus. So it is uh, very good, I think, to be establishing, be establishing those relations and actually moving the three from over here all the way over. I think uh, great play on behalf of the black player for seeing that and making that move. This definitely looks like a higher level um, game than we've seen before. 
we are removing ourselves the best we can from the game. Right now, no one's secured a continent. Uh, I really, really like the white player's position here. I think they'll secure their continent very soon, and they might be able to start working on a second one. This one right here is a very common one to expand in between these two continents, although it does look like the uh, blue player might be going for that one. Let's see what the white player chooses to do. It's pretty, pretty simple what the pl white player should choose to do. Let's see how they go. So a five on two is not 100% roll in their bonus right there. Let's see if they choose to roll it or if they roll the four on one, they will actually use up some excess troops and a different bonus. Which I think is a good idea, although establishing that continent would be also a good idea when it looks like the blue player might be taking the rolls and attempting to get it right now. No, the blue player is not going to choose to do it. The blue player is going to choose to do that. Let's see. Oh, blue player indecisive. <laughs> see what they choose to do. They do not take their bonus. Took a moment to take a drink of my water right there. Sorry for the few seconds of silence. Probably should have said something before I did it, but I didn't. Purple player still working on their bonus, getting their troops out of someone else's. Being the red player's bonus. And just a pro tip, I think when I watch these games, when I watch other risk content, looks like the black player is going to be working on getting their troops that are in the purple players area out how they're going to do that like i said it's going to take a lot of coordination that five on two is not 100 percent roll uh we'll see how this goes about because really this huge amount of coordination i don't know if it exists at this level move ourselves some more and because this is progressive, without individuals getting their bonus that early, we might see it not play that big of a part in how the game goes about because we're getting ready to get into the possibility of first trades. And as we know, at the lower levels, individuals will choose to roll, um, not to roll, to trade in those lower card trades where at the higher levels, you'll see everybody or almost everybody wait until their fifth card. They usually don't trade in before the, the forced fifth card trade in unless they think they can take an individual out or secure a position that they wouldn't be able to get otherwise that will put them in a good position for the mid and long, essentially sacrificing the short term. See what the white player chooses to do. The white player has been playing very slow, but that is okay as a 60 second turn timer. They're thinking, what are they going to choose to do? If I'm the white player, I think I take the bonus right now and start looking towards expanding. Not a lot of coordination going on um, within themselves, but I am liking what we're seeing between the purple and black players. So the white player, let's see if they have botted, which would be very interesting because it's going to put a, a big block of troops in the way of the black player and potentially also the purple player, although the purple player might be able to take advantage of this by getting their troops out. So the blue player should be finally taking their bonus. Please do so, blue player. And progressive games can be pretty slow in the beginning as far as things to comment on but there's a lot of subtleness in them that's that that sets up for the mid game so blue player let's see if the blue player is allowed to hold this by the red player or by the black player i think they will be they should be allowed to hold it um the red player should be taking their bonus this turn um and unfortunately i am not sure if any other player is going to be able to take their bonus anytime soon Purple player looks like they're saying the black you should get out of here on the next turn, fortifying their three up to make a seven. The black player needs to choose how they're going to do this.
the black player thinking. You might think the black player is in a pretty tough game, and we think about if it was fixed, I, I would say this is a, a pretty tough situation to be in right now um, with your uh, one of your neighbors getting their bonus, the other neighbor threatening to hit you if you don't get out of theirs. Um, but we think about how it's a progressive game too. The black player all being in one spot, being in one nice line, that is a, a very tough situation to be in, and I do not envy the black player. Looks like the black player is not going to make a move because they are not going to be here. We'll see if they end up coming back. So right now we have two individuals. Actually, no, the white player is still here. We have at least one individual that is not. So everyone... But the black player is here. Black player still easily had a chance. We'll see what ends up happening. I, I do think that the purple player is going to choose to hit the black player's 5 and 2 decks. Um, actually, the red player invading the purple player. Very interesting move. I think that puts them in a spot, a very, very sensitive spot where... Um, they could be hit by the blue player when that turn comes around. We do not know if the blue player is going to be very friendly. And then, then there's going to be two battles going on the red player is going to have to deal with. We'll see if they're able to hold their bonus. I'd be very upset if I was the purple player. I'd even consider taking an early trade on four if I had it, just to say, uh, you can't do that to me. You can't bully me. There are some people out there who find, if they find out, that they can push you and they will test to see how much they can push you uh, they will choose to uh, continue to do so and actually uh, so, so some individuals you have to feel that out and, and know when to say no you can't push me around anymore and actually the blue player making some moves considering the black player isn't here anymore and it is neutral ai i think the blue player has a good natural guard in the top the only way any individual is going to get through to here in this pathway is they go through a five and a seven of the black player is still gone which the black player is still gone so the blue player can consider themselves pretty safe in this area the purple player does trade in early are they doing it so they can say no you can't push me around red no they are not they choose to attack who did they choose to attack they choose to attack there the black player and then they choose to attack the yellow player, which is myself, I like to consider myself actually the gold player, um, but I don't know if I I can pass that off. <laughs> the black player still gone, still in the way of the purple player, probably very frustrating. I do anticipate being removed from the game fairly soon. I think it would be an easy bonus take for the blue player to do so. And the red player gets 11 troops, a huge amount of troops. What are they going to choose to do with it? They've already shown they will not be a good neighbor. Are they going to hit the blue player? Looks like they may just be going for an elimination, possibly of the yellow player, or they're going to take a bonus. Let's see what they choose to do. So they do eliminate the yellow player, which was not worth it. If you're watching out there thinking, oh, cool, you took someone out, I will tell you, not worth it because myself as the yellow player had zero cards and honestly was not a threat if you had seen how I was acting. And they do choose to take that bonus up there, which had a lot of the blue player's cards. Instead of taking the bonus that directly touches them uh, right here, which is... A five versus a four, although it might be a bit harder to hold if the blue player decides they want to do something about it. Although the red player and the blue player have been very friendly with each other. I did miss what the white player chose to do. So the white player chooses to take a card. Good for them. They're playing pretty safe. 
the blue player are they going to be attacking the red player breaking both bonuses perhaps or just taking a second bonus they are going to be breaking the red player which i think is a is not a bad move considering the red player is already traded in and they're not going to have any direct routes to retaliate if the fortifications are done well although i will say i would have liked it if blue had broken both bonuses if you're going to attack an opponent uh it is often advised that if you're going to attack them you really attack them unless you're working with someone else and you anticipate them to also follow up so we'll see if the red player chooses to use their bonus troops from the bonus that they still hold to go in to the blue player very interesting move from the blue player We're going to see how it plays out. Black player still gone? Question mark. They may have returned. It will not let me see that because I've been removed from the game and know the black player is not back yet. That blue player still having that natural guard up there. It's it's such a nice, nice thing. I, I really like what the white player is doing up there, although the white player is is looking very close to being eliminatable unless they're going to get their trade in pretty soon i think it'll be dangerous for the white player to wait for a fifth card and that they probably should t uh, trade in if they have it what does the red player choose to do so at least in the short term looks like the decision for the blue player to break the red player is working out well with as we get deeper into these cards we need to consider who can be eliminated for their cards who's easily eliminated who has lines on who right now oh wow big number from the white player what are they going to choose to do with it are they going to choose to take their bonus and sit at this point they're not worth being eliminated for their cards so i do like this move from the white player. So the blue player is in multiple positions, although not super spread out. And actually, no one here is very much spread out. The safest person might be the... Gosh, really, purple and white have lines on each other. The blue player going in should stop attacking, not open up that eight. Thank goodness that roll failed because that eight could have turned around and hit the blue player. The blue player, though, playing with fire. Let's see how they choose to fortify, and they should probably hope the red player does not have a trade on three. Trade on three for the purple player. What are they going to choose to do with it? Doesn't look like there's anyone they can really eliminate. Maybe the black player although that would not give them a trade on three and it would cost them a lot of troops to do so so it's likely not worth it they're going to finally secure their bonus but it is still vulnerable to the red player who did uh, go into that bonus earlier we'll see if they choose to do it again although red probably preoccupied and doesn't need to be fighting two battles when they're losing one Purple in a pretty safe spot, though, barring any trades. Red also very spread out. But this map is so small that really things can change very quickly. The blue player, if they wanted to, could wait till they have two cards or three cards with no trade, four cards with no trade, take out the black player and use that when the trades get large enough to get a forced trade in and be able to take uh take the game if the cards line up to be that way at this point if the blue player does have a trade it might be worth it to do just that red player having four cards very scary if the blue player is able to take out the red player they should be able to snowball that into the w we can imagine the blue player taking out the red player, lining themselves up to then take out the black player, 
And then from there, you should have such an overwhelming advantage. The white player is the only one who would be on three cards with the possibility of a trade. The purple player will not. And the purple player and the white player aren't even being friendly to each other. I don't know why they've chosen to do that. see if the blue player does have the lines to take out the red player. Looks like they're going to be going through the black player, which is not going to give them a trade, a forced trade in. 13 on 8, loses 7. They're not going to have enough left over to remove the red player. Will not give them a trade uh, removing the black player. Although next turn they will be able to. But that's hoping that the red player does not have a trade on four. And removes now blue from the game. So really a real a real uh, swap going on right now. How the, how the turntables. <laughs> uh, but this is definitely a, a deep... A deeper game, I'd say this is a less superficial uh, for, for viewing. Um, so I could see someone who's more of a casual person right now wondering, how does this apply to me? And I'll tell you how this applies to me. What you can take from, or applies to you, what you can take from this game is not every game, and you may already know this, is going to have good neighbors. Uh, I think the reason why the white player his bonus hasn't been broken yet it's because of their guard i think if they put a threat stack someone's gonna break someone will break it open they them having this guard on all of their entrances i think is the reason why they're holding their bonus the blue player not being able to be retaliated on probably the reason why they're holding their bonus and actually right now we are going to see the red player are they going to continue and open up that 19 maybe even hit it no they're going to go northward why are they going to ch this way i'm not quite sure maybe just to hit the white player which i think was a very odd decision i do not think the white player was a threat for winning this game not sure why they've chosen to do what they have done but now they are actually the Wow, the red player is lining up on the white player, although I do not think they'll have enough guards to be able to do anything about it. Um, they will not have a trade coming up, and the white player is in such a strong position at this point. What's the white player going to choose to do? They're going to continue to keep their guard up. They, they should probably take a card somewhere, though. What are they going to choose to do? They're going to choose to break the purple player not retaliate on red who hit them very interesting decision they are going to choose to hit red red player not going to be having a trade scattered throughout the map is probably the best setup they could have right now because at least their 25 troops aren't all in one little location it will be very tough for the blue player to take out the red player although i will not say impossible but near it will the blue player choose to hit the red player or will they just retake their bonus what are they, they going to do something in between that maybe let's see what the blue player chooses to do Do you think the momentum is with the blue player in removing the black player? The blue player marching forward is going to make themselves touching the purple player and they really haven't had any direct conflict up until this point. But with the blue player taking a second bonus, I could see the purple player stepping in here and saying something about it. We'll see if they're going to choose to do something about it. Maybe rolling an eight on six or seven on three into, oh gosh, it's so hard. Purple player just going to hit the red player more than once. I think probably unnecessary considering the red player is not the threat at this moment. The red, the threat right now is the blue player and the white player, which we may see them collide in the future. I'd actually like to see that the purple player with their aggressiveness and the white player with their more conservative play style right now 
I'm really enjoying it. The red player just trying to hit the white player saying, you ruined the game for me. You hit my big stack. The white player saying, I hit yours because you hit mine. See what the white player chooses to do. White player could take out the red player. Be a difficult removal, but not impossible, I do not think. Well, no, I, I think it, it's not going to happen. I think the more they attack now, they're just giving the red player's cards to the blue player. The white player choosing to take a second bonus. I don't think they'll be able to hold it. But we'll see what happens. I do think... It would have been possible to remove the red player at that point for the white player. But now the red player is done. The blue player getting a trade in. Line it up. Take out the red player and let's sweep the game. It should go the red player into... Oh, actually, taking out the red player is not going to get you a, 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 a trade in on three. But putting those 12 troops there to take out the red ones is probably overkill. Enough troops in other locations maybe have been able to take out a purple player, although not quite sure. I think a huge part of this is going to be, does the purple player have a trade on three, and where do they choose to put it? Red player removed from the game. If these individuals left do not have some quick trade-ins, it is going to be snowballing for the blue player, although they do trap their 13 stack. Do they let it out? They take it to defend their home base there, one that they have been very aggressive about defending. I do not like exactly what the blue player is doing, although they do have a large amount of bonuses. The issue is a lot of their stacks are not active. The blue player may have a 20. Oh, wow. And the white player is getting hit probably for breaking the purple player's bonus earlier. But when we look at this, we consider how many troops are actually active from the blue player. Although it looks like it's not going to matter because the blue player should just be able to take the game on their next turn. Let's see. 13, 10, 12. That's how many troops are active. Plus these threes. We look at how many troops they have inactive right now. Troops that can't do anything. They have a 10 right here. They have a six right here. They have a 30 right here. Or thir uh, that 13 right there inactive. But at this point, the blue player should be able to take the game. It's almost as if the white player is saying, if the game is lost, then I'll at least be taking second place. I'm going to take a drink of my water. Holy cow, the purple player... Now, this is a, a good tip. If you think you can't take first, you think you can't pull it back, which I don't think the white player could at that point, secure second. Let's see if the blue player notices what the white player has done and decides to work with him. Look at that, the white player. Oh my gosh, the purple player surrenders, guaranteeing second place for the white player. At this point, the troop difference should be insurmountable, even with the progressive cards right now. Blue player taking half of their turn, but taking out the purple player for their cards is going to give them a trade-in, is going to reset that turn timer. And they should be able to hit the white player now and in the game with that forced trade-in. 45 troops, just as much as the white player even has. 227 troops to 44. And while we see it end out right here, I think we're going to close out by saying, and this is something I'm asking myself, what could I, if I was in this game, what, what could I have done? What would I have done? What lessons can I learn from watching this game? Number one was, and I think this is an often, oh, the blue player traps, traps their 59 stack, so it's not able to continue to hit the white player. So we might see the game go on for a bit longer, but um, what you can take from, one of the things you can take from this and what other people um, have said in the past, it's been said before, and uh, I think it holds true in, in a lot of ways, is the first one to strike between two neighbors is often... The first one, and I'm not I'm not talking about what the white player is doing here. I don't think they'll be able to pull it back. 
um, they're behind on the trade rotation and their 90 to 217 troops is just I think it's in insurmountable uh, if the blue player is fast enough but even if they're not but uh what was I saying <laughs> gosh I can't remember what I was saying what can you take from this Yes, so frequently the first person to be the bad neighbor in a situation is the one who ends up winning. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it is part of risk for the game you play. So blue really pushed his way through this game by hitting red, red not being able to respond. If red was in a situation where they were able to respond, uh, I think it would have looked much different but red did not put themselves in a situation. They were almost too trusting. So unfortunately, I think I think that was a big downfall of red. And then once they were broken, I would have liked them like to see them have uh, gone up and secured this bonus. Uh, the blue player at one point even could have secured this bonus um, before the yellow player myself was removed. So I do think staying in that direct conflict when we were so early in the game, I don't think the first trades had even come about yet, or or maybe they had just come, but they're not very big. So the blue player and the white player, I looks like the white player isn't doing anything. And I'm not sure why I'm not able to see if they're still here. So the white player at least is going to be taking a card. Is the blue player just given up? That is a question. It's almost as if the blue player is given up, but you know, I didn't pay attention to the last two go arounds. So, okay, 55 troops. The blue player has clearly not given up. Um, the worry here is, is the blue player fast enough to remove the white player? And with this troop deficit, like I said before, I don't think there'll be an issue. So keep attacking blue player just attack 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 as much as you can i guess if your pathing's not great it's okay we're gonna get there together um keep attacking you got 60 seconds that's on me for making a 60 second turn timer keep attacking here we go Twenty one troops, twenty troops, twenty six troops to the two hundred and twenty troops of the blue player. Is the white player just going to throw in the towel? I've been in white player situation before where where you wonder, can I still bring it back? Can I still bring it back? And and I say keep keep going for it. The white player looks like they are just giving up. They're not taking a card. They will not have a trade. The blue player, with the speed they're attacking, will be able to end it this turn or the next one. Watching blue close it out. Coming into the final stretch here. 17 troops. 16. 15 for the white player. We should see it in this turn. If not, it's going to be down to the to the last or second to last territory. The blue player not able to end it, but the white player not able to take a card. And what an ending here. The white player staying through it all. It looks like good for them. The blue player lined up, wanted to click it or press it or, or however. The black player laughing, saying it's over. Well played and honestly, well played for the uh, blue and the white player. Really great move. Amazing move. Something to learn from was the white player saying, if I can't get first, I'm going to make sure I take second. And 
the purple player surrendering from that. And the white player, maybe they have actually left or they're just waiting it out, enjoying how this map looks. We got that blue on blue. Looks like there's a whole bunch of water on this map. Where are the territories to take? All I see is water. <laughs> uh, except for that one little white up there and then we got some other gray and white land. Interested to see the ranks here. We had some, I think, mechanically interesting plays. I think plays that made me think we were going to see a high level game. Um, but we, it, not saying this wasn't a great game to watch, it really was. And the game goes to the blue player. Um, I think maybe white should have been a bit more aggressive on taking their first bonus. They held it very well. And uh, I think maybe white could have even considered a second bonus. I don't know. Let's see what we got here. So we've got blue, the novice taking home first in the grand novice series. I'm very happy to see that right now. We've got a beginner, an intermediate, a novice and a beginner. So I had it open all the way up to intermediates. We have one intermediate. Um, I'm very happy how everybody played, everybody who, who put the work in. Um, I think the black player could have stayed, uh, especially when considering um, to rank up. This individual is an intermediate. To rank up, you do not have to get first place or second place or third. Um, doing better than sixth can often help you rank up. So would have liked to see the black player stay. I don't think they were an awful position, although the area they were in was a battleground. Um, congratulations to everyone. And to take from this, I hope everybody had fun. You know, if the black player wasn't having fun anymore and they choose to leave, regardless of whether they'd rank up or not, I support that, you know, because you don't have to be number one to have fun. 